in the last 40 years and since 1997 with West Wind, one of the flagship programs for forest management in the Great Lakes St. Lawrence, of which uh, the French Severn Forest is located, is our tree marking program. We go out to the areas that have been designated for approval in our forest management plan for timber harvesting. We do a site-specific civil culture prescri prescription based on the tree silvics and uh, surveys that we do in the forest, come up with a plan. The tree markers then take that plan and they select the trees for retention or removal with paint based on the prescription. And those folks are provincially trained and certified. We audit the tree marking prior to the area being cut. The Ministry of Natural Resources can also audit us and audit the tree marking. Uh, so there's a checks and balances uh, process in place. And then the area is cut and, and we move forward. So uh, most of the areas that we uh, manage are marked by tree markers. So the, the actual trees that are going to come out are selected by, by someone. One of the primary marking objectives is to uh, provide space to the better trees and remove the poorer trees. This was taken from the tree marking guide. There's several tree diseases. Some are considered uh, infectious uh, and, and need are a priority for removals. Other may degrade quality, but we've learned from the past. In the past, uh, marking regimes, would, uh, the markers would go in and remove all the diseased trees and clean it out. And we found that by doing that, we'd end up getting die back in the crowns. It was too much of a shock for say a ma maple forest. And so uh, when we go in and remove the poor trees and defects, we don't remove all of them. We, we remove the, the most infectious, but we, re we need to retain a certain level of stocking to maintain uh, structure and also to, to promote the proper development of, of, of the forest. So tree markers are trained to uh, ma maintain biodiversity by maintaining mass trees, especially if they're rare. There's certain requirements to maintain ra uh, so many mass trees per hectare. Here's a beech tree with some bear claws on it. Super canopy trees, the white pine that's extending above the, the general canopy, that's considered a super canopy tree. There's a requirement to maintain so many of those per hectare. So the tree markers uh, look out for that. So that individual white pine tree would probably get a blue mark on it in a hardwood forest that would tell the logger, uh, hands off, you're, you're, not, you're not cutting this one because it, it, has a, a, it has a value. It would be used by, by raptors for perching or, or nesting, that type of thing. Cavity trees, tree markers are trained and required to retain cavity trees. Basically what they do is they'll put a, a no cut buffer, a, uh, an inverted red T, red means stop, approximately 20 meters around the tree. You can see here in the middle picture, there's, uh, uh, there's a nest, so they're trained to look watch out for the nests. They're required to report their findings. The Ministry of Natural Resources is, is informed and their biologists come out and confirm whether the, whether the nest is active. And depending on the species, there's different sizes of buffers, no treatment, timing windows, different types of prescriptions. Uh, we call these area of concerns that are implemented on a on a site by site basis. Uh, we monitor the timber harvest, the timber harvest, the hauling, the road construction, installation of water crossings. We're involved in that activity. We, uh, we offer training for the loggers, put on training, encourage careful logging. There's uh, standards in our forest management plan that have to be followed with respect to, uh, to rutting and site damage and trail coverage with the intent of ensuring that we have a healthy forest. Uh, once we're done timber harvest. Uh, here's an example of a pine shelter wood block. I'm actually, I might be dressed in a suit, but I'm just as comfortable in a, a pair of work boots and a hard hat and a cruising vest. I wasn't sure whether I should wear my zip off uh, quick dry pants uh, and hiking boots. I wasn't sure whether we were gonna do some tree planting today, but, uh, uh, oh, and by the way, every day is Earth Day for a forester. Uh, <laughs> So here's an example of a block uh, that I was involved in developing the prescription for, um, for the second cut in 2010, auditing the tree marking and then monitoring the harvest. Uh, this, this particular block uh, had the skid trails laid out well in advance uh, by flagging. The techniques they use include uh, where, they, where they hit low, wet areas. Uh, the, uh, the technician will change colors to blue, so the blue to the operator means low wet and they will then install uh, corduroy which is cutting up trees to to basically create kind of a blanket to cross over the low wet area these areas are often logged in the winter time so the the machine operator may not know that there's a low wet area there so um, very very good practices so this area has been cut twice the regeneration is uh, oh, approximately three to, to to five meters tall and under the uh, the white pine shelterwood civil culture system we would go back one more time 
and do what's called a final removal cut. Typically when the regeneration is, is uh, six meters tall, 18 feet tall, the reason for that is uh, the white pine weevil uh, like to, uh, to attack the leaders of, uh, of the young white pine regeneration. They fly over, they can see the regeneration. Once they get above six meters tall, they seem to be less susceptible to the weevil. And, and so by maintaining a, an overstory, the weevil don't see the young white pine as well. And uh, so the intent there is to just hold off until the, the young regeneration reaches a, a height that uh, less susceptible to weevil, and then we do a final removal. But even when we do a final removal cut, there's requirements to leave so many wildlife veteran trees per hectare behind, so many super canopy trees, uh, cavity trees. And so our forest now, either when we clear cut or even when we undertake a shelter wood cut, when we're finally done, they often have quite a varied structure and they do not look like the, you know, sort of the open field conditions that you may have seen uh, in the past. We renew the forest. Uh, this picture here is uh, mechanical site preparation to create those uh, open seed bed conditions that I talked to you about. Here's that picture again with the, uh, the white pine regeneration. We do, uh, we do tree planting and, and we also do tending of the forest. Of course, working on Crown land, working with the government, you can't do anything without uh, extensive reporting. We have compliance plans, we have to do regeneration surveys, we have to fill out annual reports. We go through an independent forest audit every five years. Uh, the next five-year audit is coming up this September. We go through a forest stewardship council audit every five years. It too is coming up in September. We get, we're lucky enough to have two audits, major audits going on at the same time. And the FSC folks come every year and they come out and they look at different things. They'll talk to operators about health and safety. They'll look at how we're dealing with uh, 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 First Nations. They'll look at the regeneration of the forest and our certification under both of those, those schemes uh, is dependent on a successful outcome uh, in our audits. Back at the property, I've got uh, American Beach. I'm probably gonna have to take down. There's one that's really close to the house, so I'm concerned about that. I, I do fell trees, but I'm not that good. I've even got elm, I've got ash, but you know, at the same time, I've got some really nice specimens of red oak, got a happy face there, and maple, got lots of maple. Some's in decline because it's sitting up on top of the, the rocks and with the, the drought conditions, that has, that's, going to, that's going to be a, a, an issue for me. Optimistic that uh, we'll have forest cover around our, our property and the kids can, they've got some mountain bike uh, trails there and uh, I need the boys to have something to do because they're quite wild and so I gotta keep them busy. To wrap up, I believe that uh, the forests of Georgian Bay are, they're ever changing. There's, we, they're always going to change. They're never static, but I think they're resilient. And I just, I think of, uh, I think of uh, the diseases that uh, on the crown that we've gone through over the last uh, 20 years and talking to Joe and being out and doing surveys, free to grow surveys on these areas that had the jack pine budworm and there's a healthy new forest coming up and uh, dealing with the, the root rot pockets. I believe the forests are resilient and thinking about back to when the area was first logged and they stripped it like there, there was almost nothing left. And yet we have, it's my understanding, we have one of the largest intact landscapes of white pine in Eastern North America, back when we got our first uh, Forest Stewardship Council uh, audit done in 2001. And my understanding is that it's, it's one of the most extensive, uh, yes, it has roads and it's bisected by, uh, by the highways and of course there's forestry roads. But very, if you fly over the, the French Severn Forest and you fly over uh, the, uh, the landscape of uh, Eastern Georgian Bay, it's amazing. It is just a solid, it's solid green. And I think with good stewardship, it's always going to be here. So here's my, uh, here's my young budding forest ranger between Harold's Point and the Visitor Center at Kilbear, future uh, Adam Van Coverden maybe, and my daughter, crazy daughter, she wants to be a lifeguard. Uh, <laughs> she's jumping off the rocks there, and your classic Georgian Bay rocks and, and view, and it was amazing. We, we went out west, and then last year we went east to Nova Scotia, and I mean, the Rocky Mountains are, are wonderful and the West Coast and the East Coast are, are great, but to tell you the truth that we, uh, we really enjoy the, the, the big waters of Georgian Bay, spent a lot of time at uh, Kilbear Park and I'm, I'm just so happy to, uh, to be part of managing this, this uh, forest. So, thank you.